Hey, it's Patrick Riley for HazyStudio.com. Here with a tutorial on how to use Cinema 4D and MoGraph 2 to create a domino scene like this. This is all done with one piece of keyframe animation, and that is just uh, moving that ball to knock over the first domino. Other than that, the rest goes on its own. So let's get started. Come on over into Cinema 4D, and to start, just go up to Cameras, and pick Top, and come up to the Pen Tool, or Spline Tool, and just grab the Bezier. Just go ahead and click and draw something out. Go up to Selection, Select All, now right click, and make it Soft Interpolation. And then maybe just adjust your points a little bit. Alright, that should be good. Now go to Cameras, Perspective and go ahead and create a cube, change the X um, to 100, 100, and the Z to 25. And because it's 200 meters tall, just go ahead and make it on the, just change the Y to 100. So it sits flat on the ground. And go ahead and hold Alt or Option key and go to MoGraph, Cloner Object. And then in the Cloner Object, come down here to Mode, change it to Object, and then just drag your spline onto the object. And what you can see is happening right now is the Cloner Object is lining up the objects that are being cloned by where their axis is, which in this case it's right in the center. So to fix this, what we're going to do is just drag the cube out of the cloner object, right click on the cube, make editable, go on over to a side view, let's just go to the left, grab the object axis tool, and just on the y-axis just drag it down holding shift and it should click to the bottom and now we can go back to perspective and drop that back in the cloner object and yours may be right it may be they may be standing up the right way but for some reason recently I've done this a couple of times just for uh, some animations I've done and sometimes it's worked and just done what it's supposed to do and face this straight up, but sometimes the cloner object messes it up. If that does happen to you, what you can do is go to the left view again and just uh, hold shift using the object axis tool and just oops, make sure it keeps out of the cloner object and just drag it up to the top and you can put it back in the cloner object. and it should be right now. So now what we're going to do is go up to the light and drag a floor. The reason we're using a floor and not um, a plane is because the floor will continue to extend whereas the plane just sort of ends and the floor just goes to all of the horizons and just like doesn't end. So let's just go ahead and delete that. Now let's add dynamics to these, so click on the cloner object and shift click the floor. Come up here to tags, go to MoGraph, go to rigid body, and if you hit play you can sort of see them wobble a little bit, so we're starting to get the effect. And for the cloner object, we need to change it so they're not all spaced out like this. We need to come down here and change the mode 
to either even where they'll be an even distance apart but what I like to do is step and for this case you want to you want to try and keep you want them to be pretty close so I'll just change mine to let's see let's try 140 okay now for the next step to knock them over come up here grab a sphere drag it up um, sort of align it with this first domino come up here go to tags MoGraph rigid body so now it'll be able to react when we keyframe this so have your sphere selected make sure you're on the first frame and come down here and click keyframe drag over to about frame 30 and just sort of maneuver your circle so that it's bumping the first domino and hit keyframe. Now if you play, oops, let's change our um, scene length to something like 300 and let's try it again. Alright, that looks pretty good. So now what we can do is come on over to the floor and let's change the friction to maybe 0.6. That way the dominoes don't like slide unrealistically so it looks like there's a little bit more realism to them. Alright, that's looking better. Now we can go ahead and render this and just see what it looks like. It looks really flat right now so what I like to do is come up here click on your render settings go down to effect and global illumination. Now we'll need to create a sky and now if you hit render it'll take longer so you don't need to do this necessarily, but if you do, it'll look a lot better. So go ahead, go wild, use the example I've shown you in this tutorial and make something amazing. Uh, go ahead, if you make something, make it a video response to the, our YouTube channel, and I'll be sure to watch it and see what you guys have done with this. And if you want to render this out and you don't know how to make a video, just come up here, go to Make Preview. Actually, you might want to come up here and go to Render Settings and go to Output. And you might want to change the output to something like HDTV 720, 29.97 frames a second. And if we go for an external render, that'll make it a lot bigger compared to what Cinema 4D has as default which is a pretty small render so let me just set up a good angle and you can even hide the sphere from the final animation if you don't want to see it so if I go ahead and hit play now and then just render this you can see the sphere is gone if you just don't want to have it in there and now to export as a movie, just go to Make Preview. And because mine is set to 1280 by 720, if I go type in 1280, it'll make it 1280 by 720. You just hit OK. And depending on your computer, this may take a while. And just let that run through. And when it's done, you'll get a pop-up in your picture viewer that looks like this. And you just go to File, Save As change the type to animation, the format to QuickTime, and hit OK, and then it'll ask you where you want to save it. For more tutorials, product reviews, and more, visit hazystudio.com. Also, be sure to subscribe, comment, and rate, and follow us on Twitter. Thanks for watching.